Ever wonder why some kids can stay calm while others melt down over the smallest things? It all comes down to a battle between two parts of the brain. Your brain has both a manager and an alarm system, but when they don't work together, self-regulation can fall apart. So what exactly is happening in the brain when a child struggles with self-regulation? And how does the body play a role in this process? Today, I want to break down the science behind self-regulation and the brain-body connection so you can better understand why some kids struggle more than others and what you can do to help. Hi, I'm Margaret from Your Therapy Source, where we create professional resources to help students succeed at school and at home. So let's get started with today's topic. At its core, self-regulation is about balance. The brain constantly processes information from the body, the environment, and past experiences to determine how to respond in any given moment. The prefrontal cortex, often called the brain's manager, plays a major role in regulating emotions, decision-making, and impulse control. This part of the brain helps children pause before reacting, weigh their options, and make thoughtful choices. But the prefrontal cortex doesn't work alone. It communicates with other key brain regions to manage self-regulation. Here are three of those regions, the amygdala, the hippocampus, and the hypothalamus. The amygdala acts as the brain's alarm system. It detects threats and triggers emotional responses like fear, anger, or excitement. When a child feels overwhelmed, the amygdala activates the body's stress response before the prefrontal cortex can even step in. The hippocampus provides context, helping the brain recognize whether a situation is truly dangerous or if it's similar to past experiences. This can either calm the brain down or reinforce a stress response. The hypothalamus helps regulate physical responses to stress, like heart rate and energy levels. When these systems work together effectively, a child can assess situations calmly, regulate their emotions, and respond thoughtfully. But when they're out of sync, children can overreact, they can struggle to focus, or feel stuck in a state of stress. Self-regulation, though, isn't just about the brain. It also depends on how the body processes sensory input. The brain constantly takes in sensory input, sights, sounds, touch, and movement. The thalamus acts as a relay station, deciding which signals to send to different brain areas. If this system doesn't work efficiently, a child may struggle with focus, feel feel overwhelmed by stimuli, or miss important cues in their environment. (laughs) The reticular activating system plays a crucial role in helping children stay alert and focused. If the reticular activating system is underactive, children might seem sluggish or inattentive, If it's overactive, they might be hyper alert and easily distracted. For children who struggle with self-regulation, this sensory filtering system may not work efficiently. They might overreact to small sensory triggers, like one loud noise or brighter lights or unexpected touch. Or they may not notice important cues like a teacher's instructions or social signals from peers. When sensory input is too overwhelming, it can trigger fight or flight responses, making it difficult for a child to stay calm and engaged. Self-regulation also involves the body's ability to respond physically to stress, movement, and emotions. Here's where the basal ganglia and the cerebellum work together to coordinate movement and balance. They're parts of the brain. These structures help children control their body movements, stay physically grounded, and feel more in control of their actions. One more thing, we need to talk about the vagus nerve. This nerve plays a key role in helping the body calm down after stress. It activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which slows the heart rate, relaxes the muscles, and signals to the brain that it's safe to return to a state of balance. When children engage in movement-based activities, such as deep breathing, rocking, stretching, they activate the vagus nerve helping their body transition from a stress state to a calm state. For children who struggle with self-regulation, incorporating physical movement into their day can support this brain-body balance and improve their ability to focus, learn, and manage emotions. Self-regulation is a very complex process that relies on the brain and the body working together. The prefrontal cortex, amygdala, and hippocampus help children process emotions and make decisions And then the sensory systems filter information and determine how the body should respond. 
the motor system and the vagus nerve help children regulate movement and return to a state of calm. When these systems are well-regulated, children can stay focused, manage emotions, and engage successfully in learning and social interactions. But when self-regulation is dysregulated, children may struggle with meltdowns, attention issues, or difficulties adapting to change. The good news? Self-regulation is a skill that can be developed by supporting brain-body connections through movement, sensory strategies, and co-regulation, we can help children build the tools they need to succeed. Want more strategies? Be sure to check out your therapy source for evidence-based resources on self-regulation and child development. Now that you've learned more about how self-regulation works in the brain and body, the next step is exploring sensory input and movement. So in the next video, I'm going to break down the different sensory systems and how they shape self-regulation and motor skills. Plus, we'll look at some evidence-based movement strategies that parents and educators can use to support children's development. So if you want to know why movement is essential for self-regulation and how to use it, be sure to stay tuned for more videos in this series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.